there is nothing quite like opening a treasure vault in Sea of Thieves. These underground strongholds of chests and gold are impressive at first glance, but don't be fooled though by all these glittering mounds of loot. The grand prize is what comes after completing the vault's puzzle, the Chest of Ancient Tributes. But there are a few topics to cover before we can receive our reward. Our tale begins. We commence our journey at Morrow's Peak Outpost, located in the Devil's Roar. If we're gonna be on the hunt for treasure, it might as well be the most valuable treasure possible. Ashen treasure give increased gold per item compared to the standard variety. But the environment is just a bit more dangerous. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Pro tip, make sure you keep your bucket at the ready. You never know when you're gonna use it in the roar. Let's talk commendations. When Treasure Vaults were released as part of the Vault of the Ancients update in September 2020, new commendations were added. First, the Hoarder of Vault Keys, which has players digging up 50 Treasure Vault Keys. Seeker of Ancient Vaults, which requires players to open 100 Treasure Vaults. And finally, Hoarder of Ancient Tributes, which has players selling 50 chests of Ancient Tributes to the Gold Hoarders. If you complete these last two commendations, you also gain the ability to purchase two new ship sails for your vessels, the Ancient Tribute Sails and the Ancient Vault Sails, and in a game like Sea of Thieves, where everyone starts off equal, it's the little things like commendation rewards that really make you stand out in the crowd. Okay, so we're gonna go vault hunting in the Devil's Roar. The first step is to purchase the Ashen Vault quest from Hyde here. Unfortunately, there is no way to purchase a Devil's Roar Vault Captain's Voyage, so you have a limited number of vault quests you can pick up. Up to three if the game spawns them. And for me personally, I'm recording this video right after the Festival of Giving, which means that I've got two Gilded Voyages taking up two of my Voyage slots, so I can only purchase one vault quest at a time. And while, yes, I joked about the environment looking to kill us at any moment, one could argue that this place is safer than the rest of the map on an average Sea of Thieves server. Most players don't go to the Roar because of the volcanoes, but between other player ships, storms, and event spawns, the rest of the map is pretty hectic by comparison. But the Devil's Roar is smaller, which means faster travel between islands and overall faster questing. Yes, you could die relatively easy, but the recent updates to respawn timers mean that it's highly unlikely that even a- Crying out loud, I said highly unlikely. Another advantage of the Devil's Roar portion of the map has over the rest is regarding the Wayfinder Compass. You see, in order to actually complete the voyage, you need to travel from island to island using the Wayfinder Compass, which will direct you to the torn map pieces. These pieces will form a readable map that you'll use to find the actual vault key. The major downside to this method is that since you can't purchase a lower level vault quest in the Devil's Roar, you may have to find up to six pieces of map before you can identify the location of the buried vault key. This is compared to a maximum of three in a lower level vault. So you've got the background and you've got the method. All that's left is actually completing the voyage and grabbing the vault key. But once you have the vault key, what then? Most players will just head to the location of the key describes, open up the vault, grab as much treasure as they can and get out of there before things go wrong but you're not looking to be most players, are you? You're still watching this video because you want an edge. So here's your reward. Stack your vaults. Once the key for a vault has been dug up, the voyage is technically completed. If you wanted to, you could just sail back to an outpost, sell the key and call it a day. The vault is actually not a part of the voyage, which makes the method I'm talking about the best way to proceed with your vault moving forward. Don't be afraid, stack those vaults. You see, you can have another vault quest while you still haven't opened up the last vault you've got your key for. And because of that, you have the potential to open up the same vault multiple times without having to leave the island and travel somewhere else. If you wanna talk efficiency, this is it. Take for example, our time in the Devil's Roar. Remember when I showed off the commendation for Seeker of Ancient Vaults? All three of those keys were for the same island, Ashen Reaches, located at the southern end of the Devil's Roar. I didn't have to leave the island to reset the vault. All I had to do was wait for the vault door to close again, 
the room to flood, and then the key that I had placed in the totem would disappear. Then I would just pick up another key, put it down, and start the cycle again. It took two hours to nab three keys, but you could be done with the vault in minutes through this method. In fact, I was even slower because I was trying to grab as much treasure as I could and move it back to my ship. As a solo slooper, vaults are not going to be your moneymaker. But if you're just hunting commendations, this is still an excellent method. Just grab the chest of ancient tributes and leave the rest. Now, can there be setbacks along the way on this journey? Absolutely. You already saw how I was struck several times by volcanic rocks, but I managed to recover. Then I was krakened right after picking up the first treasure vault key I found. But then I managed to defeat the kraken and recover. Finally, as I was moving treasure from ashen reaches to my ship, the volcano erupted, and the robo that I had planned on transporting all of my booty in was hit by a molten rock, which meant instant destruction for the robo, and now my treasure was floating in the water at risk of being despawned. I had to quickly fast travel back to my ship and bring it in while the volcano was still erupting just to make sure I got my treasure. But I was not bothered by any other players the whole time I was working on this. So if you're looking to do treasure vaults and hoping to avoid PvP, the Devil's Roar might be the map area for you. But I'm not the kind of guy to just say that and leave it be. Time to put my gold where my mouth is and try out the Gold Hoarder Commission Captain's Voyages. These are level 25 Gold Hoarder Voyages, which give you a low-end vault with at the most only three necessary map pieces. I wanted to see if doing these vaults would lead to faster results than Devil's Roar. And the answer? It's a mixed bag. You can absolutely dig up vault keys faster using this method. So if you want to knock out the hoarder of vault keys combination alone, use this one. My issue with these vaults comes down to one thing. They're not region specific. I can pick up a vault key in the wilds and it wants to send me to Crescent Isle over the shores of plenty, all the way across the map. Keeping that in mind, we now have to start worrying about potential dangers like the greater likelihood of running into other players again. And what do you know? I encounter a player galleon while trying to do my Crook's Hollow Vault. They had the Shroudbreaker Talltale active because their totem key was blocking my totem key and we couldn't have that at all. I just wish I had been a better shot with these chain shots. It's embarrassing sometimes, you know? Still, mission somewhat accomplished. They're beached, the skeleton galleon is pouring into them, and we finish one off for good measure. Now we're back on our ship to watch the galleon sink beneath the waves. I hope I have inspired those of you still watching and shown you that treasure vaults aren't the worst thing ever. In fact, they can be pretty fun. And if you have crewmates along with you, even better. But as a solo player, you can absolutely do them. John Bardcore signing off, saying so long and take care.